What is going on guys? Grave here today. I'll talk about my thoughts on the Call of Duty Vanguard beta for week two and kind of how I feel about the game going forward. Now, just in case you did not know, the beta did get extended until the 22nd of September, so that will be tomorrow. Uh, they extended it by 48 hours, which I thought was a great thing. I kind of wish they would extend it maybe for a little, a little bit longer, a few more days, because I think the more testing, the more feedback they can get, the better. Uh, because from week one to week two, we did get some improvements, but I kind of want to talk about the game as a whole, and I'm not going to do any this in a particular order. Let's go ahead and hop right into some of the things that I have noticed about the game in general that I like or don't like. First of all, the visuals are better than they were in week one. I still think they could use a bit of tweaking, but the visuals from week one to week two is a massive difference. I know a lot of people on old gen consoles are still having issues with visuals and, and problems with the game. And I want to talk about that here in a little bit. But when it comes to just in general, the way the game looks, the, the lighting, that kind of thing, it is better. I still think there's some rooms uh, in certain parts of the map that look a little dark. You can't really ever get a, you know, a real visual uh, you know, confirmation of, a, of another player. Sometimes it will be, you'll just catch a glimpse and you can't really see them because it'll be too dark or whatever the case may be. But overall, I think the visuals are much improved compared to week one of the beta. The next thing is the option to play the uh, 6v6 mode all the way up to the blitz mode where you can play 24 on 24, or you can kind of stay in between that and play like 10 on 10, 14 on 14. I think that's a great thing for the game. Uh, you know, it's not like it was in Modern Warfare. We actually had to select a different playlist uh, now to, you know, to be able to play in you know, a larger player pool. Now, of course, when you just log in and you're on the game dashboard there, you can just select, you know, if you want to play traditional 6v6, you know, a little bit higher of a player count or go absolutely crazy with blitz mode, which is very chaotic, but also very fun. So I think that was a great addition to Vanguard. Of course, the more we've gotten to play uh, the beta, the more we've gotten to experience the maps. Of course, we did get one new map added in the second week of the beta. But just overall, I think the whole idea of having, you know, whatever type player count that you're comfortable with or, you know, whatever you want to play at any time, I think that was a really cool uh, thing they did. And I hope they continue to do this with each Call of Duty game kind of going forward. Uh, one thing that I really kind of, I guess, was excited about, but it's not confirmed just yet. It is rumored there will be ranked play in the game from day one. And I'm talking about the same ranked play we had in Call of Duty World War II. Now, I'm not sure all of you out there are fans of ranked, but COD World War II uh, ranked was really good, in my opinion, compared to Black Ops and compared to Cold War uh, over the last few years, the rank system we've had. World War II's rank system was very enjoyable. And I'm glad to hear if this rumor is true that this is going to be in the game from day one. Uh, because in my opinion, this should affect how skill-based matchmaking works. Now, will it? I'm not sure, but in my opinion, it should. Because if you're going to have a ranked playlist from day one, skill-based matchmaking in public matches should not be a real concern, in my opinion. The skill-based matchmaking should not be bumped up like it's been over the past several years. Because if people are wanting to pay, play in a more competitive environment, they can just go play ranked play from day one. People have been talking about this for years as of late. If you're going to have a uh, skill-based matchmaking, why not just have ranked in the game from the get-go and then the public matches just be like they used to be. You know, you still base it somewhat on skill so you don't have players that are absolutely at the bottom of the pool or the top of the pool in, in, in skill and in, you know, KD and things like that all in the same lobby. Uh, but at the same time, it's not really just based on players, you know, score per minute, how they play, KD, that kind of thing in every single lobby. It's more kind of a, a spread out thing where you might have some good players, some bad players, whatever the case may be. And if ranked play is going to be in the game from day one, I think that's how they should handle skill-based matchmaking. Will they? I'm not sure. But in my opinion, that's really how it should be handled from in every Call of Duty from now on. People have been saying this for years since skill-based matchmaking has made such a uh, kind of a splash in the Call of Duty community of how people just cannot stand it. And the easiest way to you know solve that is have a ranked playlist in the game and then just have the casual playlist for people that don't want to play that much of a, a sweaty competitive kind of style game. Uh, a lot of people have talked about how the sound issues are really not good in game and it really did not change from week one to week two. The sound issues are still there. It's hard to hear direction of gunfire. It's hard to hear anyone's footsteps. And I do know that Dead Silence is not going to be a actual perk in the game. It's going to be, you know, uh, a field upgrade. So in my opinion, footsteps should not be that loud considering 
If they are, of course, then everybody's just going to sit in the corner and, you know, because dead silence is not going to be a perk. So it's kind of a, a hard thing, I think, to get exactly right. But I think the footsteps should be a bit louder if an enemy is really close to you, you know, within five or six feet. I don't think you should be able to hear them across the map or coming, you know, from a long distance unless maybe they're on some kind of hard surface like metal or something on the ship here, for example. You really can't hear anyone on that ship at all on this map. But at the same time, I think they need to adjust the gun sounds to make it sound a little bit less muffled. Now, when it comes to kill streaks, I think they're fine. I don't want the whole uh, concept of Modern Warfare's kill streaks where they were absolutely deafening, you know, it's like pierced your eardrums loud because that was a little too much. But at the same time, I think they can adjust some of the footstep sounds and the gun sounds as well. Another thing I think a lot of people have been talking about uh, as of late is not really any factions. You know, in the past several years, we've had factions. You got to cho choose your character. Of course, you got to buy skins and all that kind of stuff for them as well. This year, we really don't have factions. It's kind of Team A, Team B, that kind of idea. And a lot of people have been complaining that it's really hard to tell the difference between your team and their team because everyone kind of looks the same. Now, will that be the case once the game is released? I'm sure we're going to have skins, you know, a battle pass, all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, I do understand why some people are complaining about this because you really don't have any differences between, you know, whatever side you're on. You know, your people are using the same character, whatever the case may be. And I think that's kind of what they were going for. But at the same time, it may make it difficult for some players to kind of distinguish, you know, who's on whose team because everyone's kind of, you know, the same looking character. There's not, you know, a separate faction for each side in a match. Another thing that I, I think a lot of people are happy to see uh, return from, um, you know, some past games, if you think about the pick 10 system, that kind of thing, was just automatically having 10 attachments on your weapons and i do think it's kind of a neat thing i'm kind of curious down the road once we're able to play the full game we can unlock all the attachments which we can't do in the beta will this be a problem for just pretty much making all guns laser beams or is it going to be a lot like modern warfare we have 70 something attachments and only two or three end up being meta attachments what people use in multiplayer and everything else is kind of left alone that's my only problem when you have a lot of attachments for guns uh, we learned that in modern warfare a lot of this stuff was just kind of useless in modern warfare Everyone used just certain attachments on certain guns, and most of the time for ARs or subs, those attachments were the same for each category, you know, each gun category, and everything else was kind of left untouched. So to me, it's a lot of attachments and a lot of waste of attachments just for really no use at all at times. And last but not least, uh, I think it's a really fun game. I think it could be a lot of adjustments, a lot of changes to make it an outstanding game. My only concern is it feels very familiar. If you played Modern Warfare, you're a fan of Modern Warfare. Uh, you're probably going to enjoy this game. Modern Warfare 2019 was not exactly my favorite COD as of late. I felt like it was clunky at times, but it was enjoyable also for some parts of the, of the game. But when it comes to, you know, how everyone's going to feel about playing a Modern Warfare style game this year and then turning around next year and having Infinity Ward make what's rumored to be Modern Warfare 2, I'm not sure everyone's going to be happy with that if you're not a fan of that Modern Warfare style engine. And the other thing that I uh, kind of mentioned to begin with that I wanted to mention really quickly was I kind of feel bad for anyone that's on old gen console. If you're on new gen console or PC, the game has been a really fun experience. But for everyone on old gen, it's really not enjoyable at all because of all the lag, all the uh, screen tearing, you know, really low FPS, that kind of thing. I'm hoping they can get some fixes in for old gen players so they can enjoy the game just as much as anyone that's on new gen or PC. Leave me a comment with your thoughts, guys. Of course, if you liked it, hit the like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.